Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. There are some who certainly do not want to sit on a jury, and there are some that are elated when they get dismissed from that jury. There are others who you're about to find out that sing opera as they walk out of the courtroom. All right, Nick, also a former Wayne County IT manager facing 15 years in prison. The scheme he's accused of running that cost taxpayers nearly $100,000. A hidden camera found inside a local gym, and it was a police officer who found it. Thanks for being with us for the news at 6. That officer found the camera hanging by a string in the women's bathroom. Officer was working out at Switch CrossFit near Grossbeck in Clinton Township when she made the discovery, and that's where Sean Lay is standing by now live. Uh, I guess the question is, they know who put it there in the first place, Sean? Well, police think they do. Today, county prosecutors here in Macomb County, they did charge the co-owner of this CrossFit place. One of the co-owners here, Matt Krakowski, facing one felony charge tonight. Now, an attorney has gotten involved in this, representing some of the people that come and work out here at Switch CrossFit. Tonight, he is saying there could be many more victims of that changing room camera. He says including minors caught on that camera. Switch CrossFit on Morelli and Clinton Township, a popular workout place owned by a father and two of his sons. That owner revealing to clients that one of the sons, 34-year-old Matt Krakowski, is facing serious charges tonight. Quote, some accusations have been made against Matt that are being investigated, but I'm not at liberty to discuss them. As of today, I'll be taking over day-to-day -day gym operations, and our daily operations will continue as usual. But tonight, Matt Krakowski is charged with one felony count of capturing an image of an unclothed person, an image captured by a camera, police say, that a woman noticed in the gym's changing room sticking out of a ceiling tile. Clinton Township police say the woman looked right at the camera, and someone pulled it back through the tile. Police also say one of their officers, who also works out at Switch CrossFit, noticed what he believed to be a camera in the changing room. Police say there is one victim so far, but other gym members have now hired a law firm to represent them. And then you find out later that people have completely violated your trust and uh, privacy and have exploited you. Joshua Cecil of Gold Star Law goes a step further to say he believes police are reviewing thousands of images and teens, possibly minors, who have worked out at switch could have also been seen changing without their knowledge based upon the information we have there are uh, numerous uh, high school volleyball students uh, female students that went to the same gym that could have been uh, in these videos as well well here's where all of this stands right now clinton township police say their investigation very much so continues in all this. They have taken some of the computers seized here, some of the other electronic devices, sent them off to Michigan State Police. They'll go through them to see if there's any more images of any more victims captured by that changing room camera. Devin, back to you. And Sean, I know you spoke with the owner. What's he have to say about this? We spoke inside uh, a couple of times today. Rich Krakowski, uh, he is saying his attorney is recommending to him that he not say very much about this at all. Now, mm. keep in mind, he is a co-owner here and also the father of Matt, the young man charged here today as well. He's also keeping this open. He's got clients coming and going. Some of those clients, however, told us they are not coming back. Yeah. All right, Sean. Cleanup is underway at a parking garage downtown after the top level collapsed early this morning. It happened at a structure at the intersection near Jefferson and Rivard. A total of eight cars were damaged. No vehicles were underneath the deck at the time of the collapse. Fortunately, nobody was hurt. A couple of my coworkers were uh, kind of rambling about something happening to the cars, and I'm like, all right, I'm going to go see what that's about. And then my car happened to be one of the ones affected. We can't control anything like that. Things happen, right? It was the local four defenders that discovered a mandatory inspection of the deck was missed last year. Parking structures like this are supposed to be inspected every two years. The last time the Woodbridge parking deck was inspected was in 2015. That's three years ago. The city tells the defenders the inspection was missed because the city inspector was gravely ill. 
Well, we're here now with Ben. Last night we saw rain and wind kind of move through late. Feels like that's where we're headed again, huh? Yeah, it looks like it's going to be after sunset when the storms are going to be at their worst. There's not much to look at out there right now. Four live radars almost clean other than just a few sprinkles down there in our south zone. And even when you look back here into northern parts of Indiana, there were some fairly active thunderstorms going here over the last hour. You can see how those have pretty much fizzled out and we're really focused our attention pretty much on after 10 o'clock tonight. Look at the temperature difference here in southeast Michigan It is 45 here in Port Huron 54 in Mount Clemens temperatures here dropped 12 degrees in one hour uh, as that cold front is starting to move to the south. Now that front's going to bounce back to the north and as it does, that's what's going to trigger the thunderstorms tonight. So from 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. We're going to be very focused, especially on our north zone. That's where we think some of the strongest storms are going to be later on tonight, even though they'll initiate in our south zone uh, closer to that front and move north. The primary threat is going to be damaging winds, but we're also watching for the potential of isolated flooding and also some small hail with these storms. So kind of everything is in play tonight. We'll talk about that and why we may not be out of the woods for Friday coming up in a few minutes. Kim. Okay, Ben, a former Wayne County IT employee is facing up to 15 years in prison. He's charged with stealing from the electronic supply closet to the tune of nearly $100,000. Local 4's Rod Maloney has a story. 34 year old Kurt Thomas Eshman of Canton free tonight on $10,000 bond. He's charged with embezzlement and theft using a computer. He appeared before a magistrate this morning for his arraignment. Eshman worked at the Wayne County offices inside the Guardian building as a telecommunications manager for the IT department. It was his job to order electronic devices, iPads and iPhones for county employees. The case originated by the county auditor general's office that regularly checks into the county systems to look for efficiencies and other problems. The audit showed issues with inventory and the auditor turned the case over to the prosecutor's office. Eshman resigned from his post in April of 2016 after an investigation turned up evidence of his role in the scheme. He's alleged to have ordered and then brought home some 200 devices and then started selling them online. The prosecutors say that Eshman also would bring stolen phones to cell phone stores to exchange the equipment for reduced phone bills. So Rod, what's next for Eshman in this case? Well, the judge entered a not guilty plea for him today. He has a probable cause hearing on the 10th, and then the prelim comes on the 15th, and we'll see whether there's a trial thereafter. Yeah, all right. We know you'll keep us posted. Thanks, Rod. The Shelby Township man charged in his wife's murder is headed to trial. 44-year-old Christy Beauchelle was found dead at her apartment near 23 Mile and Dequinder back in March. Investigators say she'd been shot in the head. Her husband, Joshua Beauchelle, first reported her death as a suicide, but officers say his story quickly unraveled and he was arrested at the scene, though he has pleaded not guilty to first degree murder. Farmington Hills police are joining the Find Danny campaign to help locate Danielle Steslicki, who disappeared now a year and a half ago. Officers have written hashtag Find Danny on the backs of their patrol cars to raise awareness for search efforts to find the missing woman. Steslicki disappeared in December of 2016 after leaving her job at MetLife in Southfield. Police have arrested a person of interest in connection with her disappearance, but he's not been charged in the case. New video shows a bizarre scene unfolding during jury selection at an Oakland County Courthouse. Ave Maria from a 21 year old South Lion man. That's him singing opera. Uh, Nick Monticelli explains the voice is a big reason he wasn't seated on a jury. There are a lot of things that can happen inside of a courtroom. I have seen defendants lunge at victims. I have seen punches being thrown at judges, but I have never seen what happened here inside of 2H. This time it was a potential juror bust into song. Same continuing objection? Okay. There is a pretty heavy criminal case inside Judge Dan O'Brien's courtroom this week, a case needing a jury. But first, that jury has to be chosen. I am a young opera singer. And when that jury selection was happening, the young man off screen in this courtroom recording yes. tried explaining he has an opera camp and he will lose a part of his scholarship if he doesn't show up. I actually got a pretty decent scholarship to one. Justin Burgess is from South Lyon. We caught up with him on a video chat. He said he would lose out on over $1,000 if he had to sit on this jury. Unfortunately for him, that is not a legal reason to be excused. If I can sing, would I be able to? Uh... It depends on how good you are. I was, I was having a, a just a minor panic attack. 
Fortunately for him, though, the lawyers are still allowed to excuse a potential juror. Sir, you're all set. If you'd please return to the jury office, they'll give you further instructions. And if Thank you'd you. like to leave a historical mark, you can sing on your way out. My mindset was like, I'll do anything right now. So I was like, uh, sure, any, any requests? Mario Lanz. <laughs> But he was really good. <laughs> Judge O'Brien says in all reality, courtrooms can be unsettling. So this was a breath of fresh air. It doesn't matter what the type of trial is. It's a trial. And so if you can lighten it up, why not lighten it up? Why not? As long as he doesn't shatter the windows. An encore. And Pontiac. Nick Monticelli, la, 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 la. Local 4. A great voice at that. <laughs> if it pleased the court, and as near as we could tell, it did. Exactly, That's made something. people smile. Yep. All right, let's see what Lester Holt and his team are working on for Nightly News. Lester joining us live tonight from Los Angeles with a preview. Hey, Lester. Hey, Kim and Devin, good to see both of you tonight. Shocking allegations against the NFL's Washington Redskins over what cheerleaders were subjected to on an overseas trip. Plus, how racist Internet trolls tried to stop a group of African-American girls from winning a NASA competition. We'll tell you more about that when we see you coming up for NBC Nightly News. But we'll send it back to you now. All right. Lester, we'll see you in about 20 minutes. Thanks.